Okay, thanks, Toshi. I think, yeah, it's uh, great to finally be here at the Bi Hackathon. So I'm Chris Mongol. I'm at Berkeley Lab. Um, I work on all these projects here, but I'm actually going to be talking about um, a framework I've been developing on and off over the years called uh, Sparkle Proc, uh, logic programming for the biological semantic web. Um, so I'm just going to dive straight in. We're in the RDF session. I don't need to tell you how you know we need to move towards using RDF, using Sparkle. These are fantastic uh, technologies that solve a lot of problems, but Yet, sometimes they're just a bit too low level in some ways, and we face some problems, at least I personally feel we face some of these issues when using these technologies. One is Sparkle does tend to have a, uh, has, has a tendency to be somewhat verbose at times, and verbose and repetitive. We have this issue where we find it hard to compose different pieces of logic and different uh, Sparkle queries together. Um, and also there's this impedance mismatch between the kind of way we express our logic in a Sparkle query versus how we express things in complex uh, programs that execute some kind of biological logic. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm just going to focus on this first two here and not really talk about the third, but we can talk more uh, during the hackathon um, about some of these other issues. So I'm going to actually use one of my favorite uh, Sparkle endpoints here as an example. So Simon, please. Keep it running. <laughs> I particularly like how I can go and I can get um, genome coordinates for any any gene in any organism that's in Ensemble, um, and I can do very powerful queries this way. This is an example of just you know one part of a powerful query, which is just fairly simple, like find me all of the genes on human chromosome X in a particular um, range, and you can see this query visualized here, um, not to scale at the bottom. Uh, what's also nice is that the schema, uh, the EBI schema, reuses uh, the Faldo schema that was developed by uh, Jervin and others here at the Biohackathon, which gives you a very nice normalized way of representing um, features on a genome. And it's highly normalized, so you can represent down to the level of the individual positions and so on. But that does lead it to becoming somewhat verbose. Um, and so I've highlighted in bold some of the area, some of the um, parameters in this query that you might like to generalize. And in my mind, there's not a great way of doing sort of generalizing and reusing these uh, Sparkle fragments. You know, there's lots of ad hoc ways. We've all done things like written a Python doc string where we use a template to kind of fill in these variables. But there's there's something kind of uns unsatisfying about, about that. Um, and we can also, what's also nice about this endpoint is you can do homology queries as well and say, okay, for this human gene I'm interested in, where, where are all the mouse uh, orthologs or the zebrafish orthologs? And this is quite a nice kind of easy scheme. And again, it's reusing existing standards. It's using SIO for uh, the homologous to relation and using the relation ontology to tell you what species an individual gene is in. Um, and so that's all, all very nice. Um, but what I might want to do is compose these two queries together. Um, so I might want to actually ask for a particular region of the human genome find me all the human genes within that region, and return all the most orthologs of those. And so there's no actual built-in way uh, within Sparkle to be able to do this kind of like composition operator. You know, you end up essentially manually writing larger queries like this, where you manually compose these things uh, together. So again, this illustrates the lack of a you know, composable building block functionality here. And so I've highlighted the top, you know, the, the orthology part of the query, and then blue the region of interest part of the query. So this is where uh, the Sparkle Prog framework comes in. So this is a programming language. It's actually a, a logic programming language. And you know, um, we heard earlier, actually, from the nice introduction about some of the early work that was done here by Professor Tageki on deductive databases and so on. And in many ways, this is stealing ideas from that, that early work. Um, and so it gives you um, an environment that can be used to create composable building block modules um, that will then be compiled down and executed as Sparkle queries. So um, the idea is to be much more compact and expressive in writing our queries, uh, to give these uh, logical building blocks, and to provide a single language that can be used for both the queries and for your additional logic. So you, you remove this uh, impedance mismatch that you sometimes have. So this uh, diagram illustrates the overall architecture. Um, and sorry, the, some of the boxes seem to have become overlaid uh, in translation to the PowerPoint. But the basic idea is, um, you know, you as the client programmer 
uh, can send not just a query, but a combination of a query and a program, and I'll show you an example of a program in a moment, to um, a Sparkle Prog engine, which currently runs within Docker, which runs in the SWI Prolog environment. Um, and this is very lightweight. You can just deploy this on, on Heroku or on a, a small Amazon machine if you like, or you can run it locally um, on, your, on your own computer. And what that will do is it will compile the program and the query down into either a single Sparkle query or perhaps multiple Sparkle queries. And it's got its built-in kind of parallel Sparkle executor, so you can do queries quite efficiently this way. Uh, and you can also combine this with uh, local programs and, and modules within the engine. And there's actually ways of wrapping onto, um, onto SQL databases as, as well. So to give you a concrete example, going back to um, using the, the Faldo schema over something like the, the EBI uh, ensemble endpoint, uh, the idea here is that we want to define, um, we have a program that defines a shortcut predicate. So within RDF, you have binary predicates or ternary predicates if you include the, the graph parameter. Um, this allows you to define your own predicates, um, and these can be n array predicates. So this is defining a location predicate that maps a feature down the bottom. You can see the, the Faldo graph here to basically a triad of um, a beginning and an end and a reference. And um, so the program consists of a rule with the head where we're defining the predicate and the body where we are defining um, how these things chain together. Um, to get these things, and I've highlighted in bold the, uh, the variables within the program. And so you can then take this program and send it across to uh, a Sparkle prog service alongside um, your query, so you don't have to write, um, you can reuse this program chunk, um, and you can write shorter, more compact queries. So you can say, just find me um, all, um, all features on chromosome X with the constraint that those uh, features are within a particular range and you get back um, your results from the, the Sparkle Prog engine here. And what's quite nice is you can actually combine together uh, different modules. So you've got um, you know, maybe one module that deals with orthology, another that deals with feature ranges, and then you can essentially compose these together quite naturally to do queries like just find me all, all human genes in this range and return their uh, mouse orthologs. And so just to compare, this is what the equivalent query looks like if you were to write it directly in Sparkle without these reusable uh, components. Um, and so at the bottom, it shows you the query that you'd write instead. It, and if you like, you can just use this, this framework to compile down to Sparkle, and then you just take that Sparkle chunk and use it somewhere else if you really want to, if you don't want to depend on, on the entire framework at runtime. So there's various ways you can access this. There's um, there's command line interface. There's also a Python module as well. Um, so you can essentially just start up an engine using Docker, or you can use one of the ones that are running on Heroku. Um, and you can write a program that looks something like this, where you can um, specify your, your query using using these NRA predicates, and then execute that over, um, over the endpoint. And so it comes bundled with uh, a number of uh, little program modules that exist for existing uh, schemas, for existing endpoints out there. So on the left, this is a subset of some of the endpoints that we have. So the Wikidata one is particularly useful because Wikidata is like a really awesome resource, but it can be quite hard to uh, author queries for, especially when you're interested in um, NRA, uh, the NRA relationships using their reification model. On the right, there's some uh, reusable schemas that are reused by some of the things on the left. And one of the things I'd like to do maybe at this hackathon is, is extend this. And if your one isn't in here, then I'd be interested in talking to you and adding that. So, so yeah, so um, some other things that I'm interested in doing are, you know, there's similarities with the Medic Handman framework that uh, Wilbur develops that um, is also based on logic programming. Um, you know, I want to improve the documentation, work with Pure on there's some modules in here already for mapping um, to environmental and ge uh, geographic data as well. And um, yeah, also, you know, it's very useful for working with complex OWL queries as well. So I'd like to extend that. And if you have, if you have your own ideas, then I'd definitely be interested in speaking to you. And uh, with that, I'd just like to thank again the, the organizers. And, um, and I guess we'll do, do questions at the end. Okay, thanks.